Hello and welcome to our workshop tonight. Uh, sorry for the delay in getting started, having some technical difficulties, including my webcam not working, my keyboard being dead, uh, lots of fun stuff. But you are here. You made it. Uh, I'm with Dr. Scott Wright, Courtney Lewis, Dr. Scott Wright, former director of admissions at UT Southwestern, retired executive director, TMDSAS. Uh, um, <laughs> how you doing, Scott? I'm doing well. Just, uh, you know, uh, living life, doing the thing. So it's uh, it's always good to be with you and Courtney and all of our friends in Never Never Land. <laughs> in ever ever land let's let's look on the bright side ever, <laughs> oh there ever, you go never okay. never perfect ever <laughs> ever land uh, okay. yes yes are you getting accepted yes always always um let's <laughs> <laughs> let's also say hello to courtney lewis former director of admissions at burrell college of osteopathic medicine hello courtney hi how are you how guys are you? good yeah hanging out hanging out yeah. just finished a whole day uh advising and application academy and stuff. So happy to jump on here. It's very applicable to all of the discussions I've been having today. So I feel <laughs> ready to go with all of this. Ready to rock and roll. Ready uh, couple, to rock. A uh, couple admin things. Yes, this is being recorded. Yes, we will send out a replay. Um, change your chat um, to to everyone. Or, uh, yeah, to everyone, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you are applying this cycle and you're, like, ready to start working on your personal statement, uh, we'll wait for a couple of those to pop in. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hello, Alam. Uh, I'm from Texas applying this cycle. Matt Soldano. Uh, either Los Angeles or lower Alabama. We never know with LA applying now. Uh, Olivia yeah. applying this cycle. Jessica Bay Area applying this cycle. Reapplying this cycle. Ooh, Becca, interesting. All right. Um, Kieran, hello, hello, hello. So as we are getting started here, I, I want to make sure of two things. Number one, that I don't distract you all from what I'm about to say. Uh, and number two, We'll have some fun interaction. So the first thing is um, we're hoping to be able to um, share some of your stuff, and we will do that through Google Docs. Historically, we've asked for submissions um, beforehand. We didn't do it this time. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different this time to see if it works better. So have a part of your personal statement. We probably won't be able to read full personal statements, uh, but a part of your personal statement, have it ready to go in its own little Google Doc um, and set the sharing to anyone with a link. And then when we get to that point, I will ask you to share them through a, a DM to me uh, and we'll share it here on the screen and we'll we'll go from there. So with that said, uh, let's go on rock and roll. Uh, can all of you see my screen? Paul from Crested Butte. What's going on? Any part of it? Yeah, sure. Any part of it. Um. All right. So, uh, where is where is Crested Butte? Uh, it's in Colorado. <laughs> it's. I know that part. So, there's Denver. There's Boulder. There's Crested Butte, Steamboat Springs. Crested Butte's out there. It's kind of okay. It's kind of on the other side, as far as I know, um, from where I am. Right, I'm on Boulder is side. Is it in the mountains? Is hey, it mountains? Ha Hannah's Hannah's right next door to me in Louisville. Hannah, I'm in Superior. I don't know if you knew that, Hannah. Um, what's up? So Louisville, Colorado wow. is is literally we we share the same zip code. Uh, oh, hi, neighbor. Wow. <laughs> all right. So uh, as I am uh, scrolling through all of these uh, willy nilly, let me see if my keyboard's gonna work. Hey, look at that. Um, here is me, a former Air Force flight surgeon, uh, a physician. Um, I got my MD at New York Medical College, founded medical school headquarters in 2012 and mapped in 2020. I have been doing a ton of one-on-one -on -one advising um, during that time, talking to cool people like these two people with me, deans and directors of admissions at medical schools, uh, learning all kinds of fun stuff. My keyboard died already, so I guess I'll just come over here. Uh, Courtney Lewis, again, former director of admissions. You also 
um, were on the National Advisory Committee for the whole application service. Um, mm -hmm. So you have tons of insight into applications in general. So um, have have looked at, what would you say, 40,000, 30,000, 50. 50,000 applications? 50,000 applications. Plus, I had an elected position on the council, which is different than the committee, um, where I had to me and my other fellow deans and directors, um, we would meet bi-weekly and discuss MD side of things, TMDSAS, HACOMIS, and all of the things coming up the pathway potentially in legislature changes and all of that stuff. So it gave me some really good insight and having to go through accreditation. So hopefully, yeah, it, <laughs> it gave me some good insight over my career, yeah. Yeah, I've never said this before about about you or Scott or anyone on our team. It's like the State Farm commercials. Uh, no, the Allstate commercials. It's like we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We've seen a yeah, thing or two. It's literally it, us. <laughs> it was a steep. It was a steep learning curve. Let's say that. But I feel I feel really blessed to have had my hands in in so many pots in kind of a short amount of time. It yeah. it allowed me to make a lot of connections. Get a lot of insight and stuff. And thanks for putting me before uh, Reverend Dr. Scott Wright, <laughs> MED, all of those things. Dr. Scott Nick Wright. Nick President, <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> Nick Knack President. Give the man a bone. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, former Director of Admissions, uh, retired Executive Director, TMDSAS. Uh, you've been with Medical School HQ um, since 2020. Courtney, you you joined yeah. in 2022, three. I've, two. I've been here a year and a half. So this yeah. will be the second cycle that I'm not seating students, which feels yeah. kind of weird, but yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, a couple other members of our team, just so everyone here has an understanding that that we have a very small team with super intimate uh, expert um, uh, experience because they were there uh, in the thick of it. Uh, Vernia Granham, former assistant dean of pre-health and STEM advising. She's been with us for several years now. Uh, and our newest member, Dina Golini. Uh, former senior MD admissions officer at Stanford, and she was at uh, Brown in their SMP program as well. So that's uh, that's our small little team, our small, cute, quaint uh, boutique team. Um, oh, wow, look, it has animations. I didn't know that. Uh, um, let's talk about personal statements, my friends, my friends that are watching right now. Uh, I would love for you to put in the comment box what you think the goal of a personal statement is. What is the goal of a personal statement? I'll let you all respond real quick. Um, what you're looking at is kind of uh, my take on the the anatomy of a personal statement that I kind of started writing about, talking about with the book, The Pre-Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Personal Statement. Um, and it's an easier way to help students understand this whole crazy process. Uh, Mark says, show your character traits. Vlada says to show why you want to be a physician, personal reasons for why medicine is the only thing for you. I'm glad, uh, Laura, you put that because that's something we'll definitely talk about. Uh, Peyton says, why medicine, why physician, what has inspired you and confirmed it. Some of these people, it sounds like they've read the book. Um, yeah, Becca, right. your personal story, connection to medicine, things you can't tell from the rest of your app. Okay. Uh, Abigail, showing growth and motivation as to why you did what you did. Work, volunteer, life. Ooh. Mike, Ooh. to separate yourself from others. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mike is, Mike is sure of himself. All right. Uh, Courtney, what is a personal statement for you? What is it? What does it need to do? Mike, Mike says I do this for a living. All right. We have, a, <laughs> we have a ringer in the group. So do I, Mike. Okay. Uh, Mike, um, I, I might have to boot Mike if Mike is, uh, <laughs> we whatever. Should, we should do a wrong answers only version of this too. So. Mike um, would be right. <laughs> um, so. You know, when when I was reviewing these year after year and things, I I had a fairly succinct kind of view of these. I want to have an easy 
starting point, right? Because I'm going through them quick. I'm yeah. maybe three minutes, maybe three minutes on this part of your application. Mm -hmm. I want a clear start of where you're dropping me as a reader on where this journey began. I need a couple of stories to highlight and help me understand the journey and the evolution arc leading you towards physician. And then conclusion, now that you know this is your path, what do you hope to provide for patients in the future? And that's it. <laughs> yeah, That's all I need from this. Um, there are other sections for other bits, other explanations. It is not an about me section and it's certainly not gonna be comprehensive. So yeah. I need an easy journey, thought flow and kind of evolution arc to follow. Yeah. Dr. Scott writes in your own words briefly, What what is the personal statement for? How many, yeah, I, I, I asked Courtney how many essays or applications she's read. How many think you've, you've seen over the years? Oh gosh. I mean, you're old. I so. know. <laughs> <laughs> I always get such an ego boost from these things with you, Brian. Um, so uh, I think, uh, I, I think that I agree completely with what, uh, what Courtney said. I, I think that to me, the, the 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 key component of the personal statement is exactly exactly what some have suggested here which is why medicine what wh why is this it for you and show me uh what what you have experienced that confirms that for you yeah. uh and, and and just get, give me that in a nutshell i completely 100 percent agree with courtney it has got to be concise it's got to be clear and i need to be able to scan it almost you know i'm gonna read it but it's 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 a fast read it's a very fast almost scan type reading and uh because you know I, especially on a first review uh there there's uh a, a lot out there and and i've got you know i'm reading yours and and i've just read uh, 20 others and I've got 40 more to do. So, you know, let, let's get on with it and, and, and tell me what's going on. And then, and then I want to see that and I want to, I don't want to have to trudge through it. Yeah. A uh, quick question that just came in. Does this apply to secondary essays? No, because secondary essays aren't, why do you want to be a doctor? Secondary essays have their own specific prompt or question. So uh, yeah, good, good uh, question. All right. So let's talk about, uh, and again, I forgot this had uh, uh, animation, so it's going to make it harder. Um, the anatomy of the personal statement that we just saw, I talk about the seed. Uh, we're not going to dive a ton into seeds and watering events and, and the actual nuance of those things um, in this workshop because it's going to be really hard to fit it all in. But at the core, when we talk about what is your seed, is what is the what is the exposure that you've had that piques your interest to go explore medicine. Uh, and most people have a very similar seed, which is where you see here the very common seeds, personal injury, illness, family injury, illness, friend injury, illness, right? Parent in a healthcare setting. We are exposed to things in our life that pique our interest in things. Uh, that's just how it works, right? Whether you become a banker, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever, you're, you're exposed to something and you go, oh, that looks kind of cool. I think maybe I, I want to go explore that. For me, my seed was uh, initially being interested in physical therapy. Uh, and so your seed doesn't have to be doctor. It's just healthcare at some point. And then I dissected a cat in high school and I said, oh, I want to cut things open for a living. And so I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. Um, and one thing led to another and did the Air Force scholarship and and ended up not being an orthopedic surgeon, but the that was my seed was I was exposed to healthcare through physical therapy. And I said, oh, this is cool. You're out here helping people go back to the their their sport that they love. And so I'm going to go explore that. And I shadowed a physical therapist for a little, uh, a little while and, and thought about doing that. So um, again, for, for all of you that are here, what do you think your seed is? Um, again, first exposure to healthcare that made you think about, oh, this is kind of interesting. I want to explore it, right? So, Trevi, how did you get exposed to being a vet? Again, it's another very common 
thing, especially for kids. We have pets growing up or you walk outside and there's a dead bird or a hurt bird and you're like, oh, I'm going to nurse you back to health. And uh, we get exposed to that and, and uh, you realize that. So again, uh, what was that exposure? So Becca says... Uh, personal diagnosis process as a kid with a variety of specialties. Exactly. Right. So Becca, Becca got it right on, uh, Ariel watching a birthing video in freshman bio class, uh, wow. <laughs> cornea transplant, having a medical condition, right? So all of these, this is your authentic story, Courtney. A lot of students are concerned that what they are going to be talking about isn't um isn't unique enough unique? Yeah. yeah it's it's cliche it's not unique mm -hmm. uh, i i completely agree with that list i mean within those fifty thousand personal statements i mean it it truly does come down to five or six things that tend to lead people into such an arduous long kind of educational path that goes into a service industry like this. And so it doesn't, don't think about it being cliche. If that's where it starts, your job is to relay that to me. And then the parts that are authentically you are what you're taking away from the lived experiences that you've had that reinforced or gave you insight or reconfirmed or whatever it was and and those parts are uniquely you as well as what drove you to it just because it has a similar vein to somebody else doesn't mean that it's bad plus it's very familiar with what we're used to reading so it's not problematic right if it <laughs> if it's just coming out of nowhere that would be maybe kind of weird to like like where is this thought even coming from but something like this easy to understand why it might drive somebody to medicine. So yeah. don't worry about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Scott, we often talk about the the what and the so what, uh, mm -hmm. the reflection of things being super important. I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, you've, you've read an essay or two where the student is saying a lot of things, but they're not actually reflecting back on what that mm -hmm. means to them. As as a reader, when you're looking at an essay and you go, okay, so what? What what's what's missing there for the student to to be able to connect with you? Well, I think it is the 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 missing quality is depth is is depth and reflection, and you know it you know I I think what we end up with often is a uh, resume like. Um, personal statement. I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. You know, and uh, and, and and okay. You know, great. So what? You know, you're you're uh, um, you're right there along with you know eighty five to ninety percent of the other people in the applicant pool. What I want to know, and what I think is really more important, is what did you learn? What was this all about to you in terms of a uh, an activity that you did or, you know, whatever. Um, that's the, that's the, that's the key, uh, to me, um, that's the differentiator between a good personal statement and a great personal statement mm -hmm. is reflection is tell me more about what this was all about to you. Why are you a better person? Why are you a better candidate? Because you experienced this, particular thing uh or that you did this or whatever um and uh and, and tell me about what it was all uh for for you what you know what what it, it's 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 also the difference between the head and the heart i want to see your heart i don't want to see your head so much mm. uh i can i can read the activity descriptions uh and and understand what you've done and stuff like that but I want to know what's this all about to you at a deeper heart kind of level. So get out of your head, get a, about 12 inches lower than that, and <laughs> give me your heart. Love it. Give me your heart. Give it to me so I can crush it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mentioned this already, right? The seat doesn't always have to be 
physician related. Mine was uh, physical therapy. We saw some others that were uh, veterinary related, et cetera. So can, um, yeah. can I weigh in on this a little bit too? Yeah. I don't know if this is coming up in a further slide, but while it says that it doesn't have to be physician related, please don't make it some random story where you're trying to highlight a quality and it's completely unrelated yes. to your medical journey. Like sometimes I'll read one about being a math tutor and how uh, they showed yeah. leadership mm -hmm. and they were yeah. a mentor mm -hmm. and they were really mm -hmm. compassionate to this person. I'm like, yeah, why is this on here? Yeah, I understand yeah. that you're trying to sell me yeah. on the quality, but it has nothing to do yep. with what I'm actually looking for with the yep. prompt. Yeah. So I'm going to pa pause for two seconds, right? I you can't stress that enough that that the skills, right? And and I was poking a little bit at Mike earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Um, about showing how you're better or whatever, whatever he said, right? And kind of going to what you're saying, Courtney, in terms of right, these qualities, these traits, these skills that students are like, I know that doctors are compassionate. Let me show you a story where I have compassion. I'm going to show you, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you that I know that doctors need to be lifelong learners and let me show you how I like to learn. So it's a very common framework for an essay that to me just doesn't work because I don't understand why you why you want to be a doctor. I just know that you think you have the skills necessary to be one. And yeah. me as a physician, I had no idea what it took to be a doctor when I went into medical school. And then when you're in the thick of it, you go, oh, like that's what life is. I shadowed, I got clinical experience. I did all this stuff to try to expose me. But you really don't know what it's like to be a doctor until you are one. And and I, I hope that's not like ego or arrogance talking. It's just it's really hard to know when someone's life is is truly in your hands and that responsibility to take care of someone and to to be responsible for their care and their family, et cetera. It's just it's just a lot that you you can't uh you, you can't really understand until you're in it. And so uh, I was on a workshop the other day, right? So uh, Scott, you're a former director of admissions. Courtney, you're a former director of admissions. Me, I talked to lots of directors of admissions and <laughs> former director of admissions. Um, I was on a workshop the other day with the admissions office at UCLA, and they said the number one thing they look at, the first thing they look for in an application is why do you want to be a doctor? Mm -hmm. Why are you here to be a physician? They don't care about your strengths. They don't care about your GPA. They don't care about your MCAT score. Why are you here? Once I understand that, then I'm going to look at the rest of your stuff. So, mm -hmm. good. It's muy, muy importante. Academics and MCAT are fairly straightforward, right? Yeah. So what yeah. else, right? What else? That's why the essays are so important. A lot of people are going to have the exact same scores as you, yeah. maybe even a better score than you. So what else? We know you're academically sound. What else? Yep, 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 yep. So what happens if you don't have a seed? I, I bet you you do. This is something that's very common we do in Application Academy is help students find their seed, help them understand. Uh, if you go to, I should have put a, a slide here for the, the YouTube video that I have. If you just go to uh, premed.tv, uh, let me type that in the chat here to everyone, uh, premed.tv and just search for uh, medical, like personal statement seed, and then you'll find it. Um, it's a, an hour long ish video, two hours, maybe, uh, from application Academy, which is our group coaching program where we help students uh, in that video. I was helping students really find their seeds. And some of them, that episode was uh super powerful, that recording. So go check that out. Mm -hmm. You have it, you have it, uh, or else you wouldn't be here. Um, let's read. Yeah, let's let's read this one. And then for those of you out there, if you have a seed that you would like us to read, go ahead and do host and panelists or everyone doesn't really matter um, and send me a Google Drive link where you have enabled the um, uh, link to let everyone show. All right, so let's give feedback on this one. This one's a really long one, but but I like this one as an example. I was just thinking that. I was like, ooh, I already know what I'm going to tell this person. It's way too long. <laughs> it's way too long. Yeah.
And as you all are uh, finished reading this, give your thoughts. What do you think about this essay or this part of an essay? Eva says, doesn't really give a why. John, not really feeling why. We can always separate the uh, the readers from the non-readers. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> slow. Uh, reflection, uh. but so many useless details. Uh, too much fluff, says uh, Eva. Very descriptive. Does paint a nice picture in your head. Okay. Does give a touch of inspiration that may lead to the why, maybe. Distracts from the point. Too much details. Uh, Scott, what do you think of this? Yeah, so I really like it i mean it sounds pretty and it's very um descriptive and it does tell a story here about experiencing these people however i get to the end of it and i'm like i don't know anything more than i did before i started reading this about why you want to go to medical school mm -hmm. um I understand that you are connected to these people and there's the, the plight of their situation and how drawn to you they were and the, the, the diff, you know, the difficulties of leprosy and what that's done to them and their community. I get all that. I mean, this is nice, but this is a huge character count here mm -hmm. for a seed that at the end of it doesn't really tell me anything. Yeah. Um, what's it, what's it selling at the end? The importance yeah. of holism in medicine, right? And Again, I don't even know what holism. <laughs> I, I that's I don't know that what that that's a yeah. weird sounding word to me. Yeah, I, I've anyway, I've never yeah. right uh, 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 the holistic philosophy. I'm assuming that's where the, that word root is coming mm -hmm. from. But it's, it's mm -hmm. a weird, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you, what do you call that? A weird structure word weird what do you call yeah. verbs adverb whatever whatever it's a weird word <laughs> so anyway uh all right i'm gonna bring up we have some examples here uh that one didn't work you guys gotta share it with uh, sharing enabled all right so this one worked let me pull up this one What do you guys think? Are you talking to us or are you talking to them? The students. I always like to give the students oh, a I chance. Know. Okay. I know I you wanted, know what to do. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. Becca says, can still be more concise. Why are you not doing it in two sentences? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> name that tune. I can name that tune in three <laughs> notes. Um, Eva, I think it's good. Uh, uh, it's a good hook, but it could be more concise. I, I want to know what you guys mean by concise. Uh, I always uh, I always thought that you should not use contractions in a formal essay does that still apply here courtney what do you think about that whole like you can't use contractions as i used the contraction in my question <laughs> i i think the more professional formal writing would would not have them i understand that people have to be cognizant of character count but if it's there it may be a little bit more appropriate to avoid them um, yeah yeah, I, I, 
always my my uh philosophy is always like i i want to hear you when i'm reading it mm -hmm. uh and that's just the way my brain works with reading stuff and so we don't we typically speak in contractions and so mm -hmm. for a personal yeah. statement i don't i don't picture the personal statement as a super formal essay where we have to avoid them yeah Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I, I, you know, I want, I'm like you, Ryan, I want to hear, I want, I want to hear it in my head coming out of your mouth. And so yeah. if it's too, if it's too formal, if it's too, you know, exacting and there's all these beautiful words, like you swallowed a thesaurus and suddenly threw up. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't like that. That to me, that doesn't, yeah, that's not authentic. <laughs> it's, when, it's when you read Henceforth, I'm like, who yeah. has yeah. ever said henceforth <laughs> out <Yeah>. loud? <laughs> yeah. that's a, I use that word specifically because I, I see that a lot in essays. Uh, so yeah. Um, Courtney, what do you think about this? I know everybody's saying it could be more concise, but I actually don't agree with that. Yeah. I think it's kind of missing some, some key elements because we're going from I had a fear all growing up to all of a sudden the fear is alleviated and oh I want to be a doctor. Yep. <laughs> like that it, it, we're missing some crucial details there. Yeah. And the thing that fixed it was in middle school, your doctor talking to you and explaining the flu shot. Maybe this pediatrician didn't feel like she could talk to a six-year-old about the importance of a flu shot, right? Like it makes sense that maybe it would have taken that long for her to like sit down and try to get you to not be freaking out about receiving a flu shot. Like I get it, but um, I'm not really understanding the impact of this and, and how it kind of kicks it off. I feel like you're, you're being a little bit too vague or a little um, too generalized in, in this. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, really catching any gravity to it yeah it's playing the the what i call the one two skip a few game <laughs> like yeah you, you <laughs> kind of miss the, you miss the details here yeah so good good all right let's uh let's do uh a couple more uh like the one before wasn't really a seed because it's like and this came after I had all of these other experiences. That was like mm -hmm. the sentence at the end. So you're like, oh, so this isn't a seed then. This isn't a starting point. This was just a nice story that you wanted to bring forward. And now we're going back in time or are we going ahead from this? Because that's not a starting point. And then this one just glances over everything. Yeah. And I don't know why this would have driven somebody to pursue becoming a physician really. Yeah uh let me see and obviously we're gonna be we're gonna give you honest feedback and we would do it you know like we would if we were reading it at the med school so it can seem maybe a mm -hmm. little bit abrasive or um critical and things mm -hmm. so hopefully you guys are open to feedback and you know when you're an evaluator at a med school you can kind of detach emotionally to what you're reading right it's not like somebody's sitting there and you're reading it face to face mm. you're having to make snap decisions and so this is kind of what it looks like and we're charged with making certain assumptions and putting together pieces based on what you're writing so accept it for what it is and get yeah. that in Yep. Try not to take it too personally. Yeah. Uh, a question as as you all are reading this, uh, if you can hear me as well, a uh, question that came up earlier, does the seed have to go first in a personal statement? No, uh, no. it doesn't have to go in any sort of chronological timeline. As long as I, the reader, we, the readers, uh, understand where we're at in your journey, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then it's fine. Mm -hmm. What does alleviating the human experience mean? What, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so, wow, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I found purpose and understanding yeah. in alleviating. 
and understanding and alleviating the human experience. So what is what is this at yeah. the start? It's a, it's like a mission statement at the start. Well, yeah, it, it yeah. sounds it's like this person space. wants to be detached and kind of robotic about medicine. Mm -hmm. It's a weird way to start. Sorry. It, it just is. Yeah, it's it's very yeah. awkward. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, right, the the feedback, Courtney, that you give, I, I get uh kind of judged that I'm I mean when I give feedback. It's just it's it's number one, it's reaction. our opinion. Take it or yeah. take it or leave yeah. it. It it's a reaction. We're not saying you're a terrible person, you're not gonna right. be a good doctor. We're saying what you are conveying here isn't working for us. That's yeah. all. Mm -hmm. If if you're trying to com you know convince me that you want to be a compassionate empathetic uh, physician that's mm -hmm. going to care for all people, doing this and then going straight into talking about research is going to make me think that you are very socially awkward and you want to be very detached and robotic. Yeah. And I haven't even read the whole thing. That's the snap yeah. decision I'm going to make. Yeah, and, and so Courtney. In in your eyes, right? If if you were back in your director of admissions role reviewing applications, would you continue with this application, or would you just move on? I would probably skim a little bit quicker to see if I catch yep. on to anything that's a okay. different tone than okay. my yes. initial assumption. But if not, if it continues to be a, worded a bit awkwardly or detached, uh, no. Yeah. So, I, so you I, give I, a little I, benefit of the doubt and then continue mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Scott, what are you going to say? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, to me, if I was reading this in, in my past life, I would see that first mini paragraph there and, and it would automatically set me up to not like this. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't, you know, you have to think about what is the psyche of your reader like, you know, what, what what are they what are you going to do with what you're saying what's that going to do to their psyche and to their uh, understanding and to their sort of uh, uh process of of the of what they're going through in terms of reading it and and so i think you know if you lost the whole first little mini paragraph i think that would be beneficial yep. and there's other problems in the rest of it but it, you know, it's kind of funny to me that the first paragraph is so short and the second paragraph is way too long. Yeah. So it's kind of weird uh, in that, in that regard. Plus I think that there's a lot of um, uh, in, in the second paragraph, there's a lot more about your grandmother than there is about you. Yeah. And it's a very common mistake um, that I'm glad you brought up, right? It, I, I have a feeling there's probably a great story here with the grandmother that, can help us understand some motivations for medicine, but it's a very common thing when the student focuses too much on the other person instead of showing mm -hmm. who they were in the impact of that person's life yeah. through this journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a, a lot of people here were like, this so sounds like resume, sounds like they're selling skills. Um, Mike asked a question about demonstrating core competencies. And so it's a very common I think mistake for selling skills, right? I, I can sit here and go, hey guys, you know, I could bench press 3000 pounds. Hey guys, you know that uh, I speak 10 languages. Hey guys, you know, right? I can say lots of things, but I need to mm -hmm. show you who I am mm -hmm. as a person. And so I, I think um, when, when students just write in their essay, I have good communication skills, which is here, right? When the person says, I realize the crucial role of communication, that student is setting up the reader to go, I know the communication is important, and I'm going to show you a little bit later on how I have good communication skills. Mm -hmm. um, they, mm -hmm. they talk about here, I have empathy. I have a commitment to scientific rigor, aka lifelong learning. So mm -hmm. when, when students do this selling of skills, I don't know who the student is. I just know who the student thinks I want them to be. Mm -hmm. Well, and how does communication skills and this profound realization have anything to do with harvesting T cells from mice? Nothing ties together, not even their research on cancer. Mm -hmm. Do they relate back to their grandmother who had cancer? Like there's not even a tie there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, to, to answer your question, Mike, uh, do you think about uh, core competencies? I, I don't. Um, again, if you don't want to trust me um, or trust don't us, do it. I, again, on the, the UCLA workshop last week, it was a, a workshop for advisors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, an advisor asked that question. Should, should the activities speak directly to um, core competencies? Should the personal statement, should the application? And, and they explicitly were like, no, like you, you do not need to call out core competencies. You do not need to, to like use them as a list to make sure you're doing things. Mm -hmm. They are there to help you understand what we may be looking for in a student, but not to use as a checklist when writing these things. So yeah. it's, in, it's important that you develop those interpersonal skills. Cause in the first two years of med school, we teach you everything about medicine, clinical skills, studying for boards, you know, clubs and organizations and stuff like that, distinctions in research or anatomy. And then you roll straight into third and fourth year where you're actually seeing patients doing rotations in people's private practices and medicine. Like you need to come into medical school with aptitude in those areas. Mm -hmm. I would like to glean that through the experiences that you've had, that you have likely developed those skills and taken those opportunities to really grow in that way. Hence the secondaries and most importantly, the interview. But when you write to them and try to sell me on them, it comes across as very inauthentic, very awkward to read. And yeah. it's just, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, it does not translate. Yep. So uh, let me ask one more question before we move on. Scott, the students out there, um, have a hard time. And, and again, I was one of those students pre-med and, and went to medical school. They, um, they think that to get into medical school, you have to do all of this stuff. You have to be the best, the brightest, the, that have the best stats. You have to stand out. And they think to do that, this is where the selling of the skills comes from in an application. How do we get students to understand that? And number one, it's really hard to, to stand out because there's 60,000 students applying to medical school every year. Um, but number two, that in our experience, right? And again, we are a, a small team of advisors based on our own experiences. There, There's very little right or wrong in this world. There's just lots of perspectives and, and opinions. But in our opinion, the way to do that is not through the selling of the skills, but through connecting, as you mentioned, right? So more of the emotional side of things. Mm -hmm. Go go down mm -hmm. 12 inches. Mm -hmm. That's exactly Explain right. That. Well, yeah, because if you're, exactly if you're right. right, if you're walking away from these experiences, having put in the hours, but not having gained anything from it or letting it have an impact on you or you having an impact on it, then what was the point in investing those hours? Yeah. Yeah. Doing exactly. it for a check mark. Yeah. You know? Eva asked a question here. A, a great question. I love this question. I heard from an admin person at Wake Forest, uh, Wake Forest Med School, that 5% of the time a personal statement helps you. 90% of the time the personal statement doesn't affect you. <laughs> and 5% of the time it hurts you. Sure. That sounds about right. Yeah, sure. right. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the meds, uh, the what I have said is the personal statement has to do its job. Above and beyond yeah. that, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to be the person that is going to read an essay and 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 that admissions reviewer is like, oh my gosh, this is the best personal statement I've ever read. Yeah. I've gotten some feedback from students that their essays were the best students from from residency directors, from admissions committee members, but for the most part. When someone's done reading it, you just need to make sure that they know why you're here. Great. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you mm -hmm. want to be a doctor. I know why you want to be a doctor. They're good intentions. They're not that you want to be right or be put up on a pedestal. Or I mean, we see some crazy personal statements. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a great question, Eva. Yeah. All right, I mean, me try not to dissuade them from inviting you for an interview, right? Yep. Again, right. the data the data is pretty straightforward. So try not to dissuade them <laughs> from wanting to know more about you. Yes, don't do that. Um, so after we get the seed, then we talk about back to the plant analogy, watering of the seed. Well, what what waters the seed? 
uh, in my mind, it's patient interaction. That's how you go and you find out if you like being around patients, if you like taking care of of sick people. Um, and so patient interactions and then going back to our reflection process, um, why was that important for you? Uh, how did that motivate you? How did that kind of reaffirm this desire to, to continue on? Uh, you have some more patient interaction, um, more reflection. And then for me, I, I'm going to skip the experiences to the, to avoid. Uh, but again, coming back to, to why, um, Courtney, I, I, I don't know if we need to go over this again, right? Re reflection is important throughout the application um, to, to be able to help the reader understand why this was important. When I'm looking at a, an application, as it says here, right? I, I read something, I'm like, okay, why did I just read that? Are you right. trying to sell me something? Are you trying to prove something to me? Or are you just showing me some of your motivations? So, um, One thing, because a lot of people will ask like, what stands out when it's bad? Mm -hmm. I have a soapbox item for this that, <laughs> you know, is subjective, but in your reflections, I think it personally is a waste of characters to go through like an explanation of, you know, you were helping provide compassionate care for this person. And then you had to hand them off to the doctor and you were frustrated because you couldn't be a physician and you couldn't. And I wanted to do more. Mm. I know you're not a physician yet. Yeah. Like that's why you're on this path. So yep. needing to say, I want, but I wanted to do more yep. is kind of in essence, devaluing what you did do, not telling me anything new because I know you want to do more. Nothing that you do as a pre-med is being a physician. Yep. So that's kind of a given and tells me that you are not taking away from the experience anything positive, like saying it was really nice to be able to provide the care that I could within my scope you're just focusing on all of the things that you couldn't do. Yeah, I made this person happy, but I couldn't do this. And it was really frustrating. Like what a negative way to look at it. Yeah. You, you know, you were helping somebody who was struggling or who, you know, was having a really tough time and you just completely devalue that. So please don't put your reflections in that kind of format. Mm -hmm. I know you want to do more, but let's focus on what you are learning and what you are taking away on your journey, learning how to provide care for people, understanding that yes, you want to do more, but what are you taking away? It's just, it's such a negative way to look at it. And it doesn't make me want to teach you medicine more because what are you focused on? All the things that you can't do and how frustrating it is because it's gonna take so long. Like, yeah. anyways, yeah. that's my soapbox item for reflection. Please don't <laughs> do that. Don't do that. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to jump into, um, I'm going to go to this example. And then again, um, for those of you out there, if you have a watering event that you would like to submit, <laughs> I love the students are ready for it. They're, they're waiting for me to say it. I go ahead and submit and uh, we'll pull up a couple of examples as well. <clears throat> Are these still seeds or have we moved on? This is a watering event. Yeah. Okay. Yep.
What do we think? Gadir says sounds more like a resume. Don't really say why medicine. I have yeah. perseverance. Doctors need to persevere so I can be a doctor. <laughs> Matt, Matt sees the trend. <laughs> it's it's like it's like lining up bowling. Like I'm gonna line up those pins and I'm gonna knock them down. <laughs> <laughs> Tie all these points into medicine. Share a specific experience or aspect you like. It's listing all the skills, competencies. Yeah. I think this one's pretty clear, right? It's just mm -hmm. look at look at my skills, look at my competencies. Uh, therefore, I should be a doctor, not related to medicine. It, yeah, so this is very similar, Courtney, to your kind of seed example that you gave earlier of of talking about leadership and communication skills, and then basically saying, well, I know that being a doctor requires uh, social interactions and interpersonal mm -hmm. skills, and look at me, I have that already. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it's just yeah. not it's not. For your personal <clears throat> statement, just not. Yep. <clears throat> All right. It doesn't really. It, it doesn't really tell me anything. It doesn't. You know. I, I mean, it doesn't tell me anything about because you say or the person here says I pushed aside these obstacles of being a first generation student and worked toward my goal to become a physician. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you're plopping this out there about <laughs> the difficulties in various aspects. What the hell does that mean? What yep. I don't even know what you're talking about here. Yep. And you pushed aside these obstacles. What obstacles are you talking about here? I mean, there's just so many question marks here. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Stopping it, it out there. <laughs> there's there's a question in the chat of is this more appropriate for the activity section? I would say no. It, it no. it's not the even experience. formatted for that either yeah. right the experience yeah. itself yeah. definitely right. and yes. then potentially yes. a, a different way to write it but yeah it, this is not something where like you can just pull it from the personal statement and stick it there because it's still not hitting the mark of talking about impact yeah. or <clears throat> what the role did for you it doesn't have to tie back to medicine and your activity section that would be very weird like just let it stand on its own and what did you learn um, so no yeah good all right so here's a, a student that submitted <clears throat> All right. Glad we got this example. It's a good example. <laughs> John, John says I got lost after the first two sentences. Pam, too much about someone else, not enough about the student. Yeah. Eva agrees. Scott's still reading. Scott, as soon as you're done reading, I want to hear well, your thoughts. I, I was so. <laughs> I don't really like it. I'm yeah. sorry, whoever you are. Um, you know my my feeling here is that it's not. It doesn't really tell me anything. I. I I mean, you tell him about John and he sounds like he was in a horrible situation and he was trying to make the best of it. I get that. But what, I don't understand what you got out of this and, and how this you know, pushed you forward. You, you don't, you're not talking anything about the physician mm -hmm. and or the physicians or the caregivers or anything. It, you know, the, 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 the physician is lost here mm -hmm. in, this, in, in, this, in this watering event. There's, there's not a, a word about it. To me, this is almost a a a, a um, this is almost really about uh, a support group for patients and how do you you know make it through uh, this difficult experience of of a severe illness uh, in in a way that's going to you know it, it just doesn't I, I don't know I, it doesn't really do much for me in terms of giving me information about what uh, what this is all about to you. In terms of caregiving, I understand it from the perspective of, from from the patient's perspective, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about caregiving and why you want to be a caregiver as a physician. And 
I, it just doesn't give me much on that. I, I, I don't see it. Well, oh, and, so. and a little bit of hubris maybe in starting to say that what you went through is the same as what this person went through, right? Mm -hmm. Like John with his pregnant wife dying of cancer. And then it reminded me of myself when I was recovering from a skin infection um, and that I wanted to live as much as I could in this very moment. I'm like, wow, what a way to devalue John's story and not talk about how you tried to help this person, but how mm -hmm. you, how it reminded you of you and how you wanted to live and gain control. Weird. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't and, go and, together. And let me, and, and let me just point out the first sentence says, I, I gained further perspective on how physicians change lives of others. Mm -hmm. When I began to work closely, how physicians change lives of others. And you don't say anything about how the physicians were changing John's life. Right. Yeah. 100%. This example and, does not fit with what you're saying. And yeah. before Courtney gets thrown under the bus for not being a doctor, keratitis is an eye infection, not a skin infection. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, although you probably know medical terminology from your scribe company days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. I guess it was just initial reaction, but, you know. Just wanted it, to it, <laughs> throw who, that out there. I mean, who cares, though? Like, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Stop moving the goalposts, Courtney. Who it, cares? <laughs> it, it doesn't matter um, yeah. because and you're it, supposed to be talking in lay terms, and and the takeaway is the same. Yeah, hundred percent. You it, tell this story about John. I have no idea why you told it, other than the fact that you wanted to talk about yourself at the end. Yeah. So again, for the student out there, I I know what we just said sounds very brutal. Sounds like we're we're making fun. We're we're not. This is just all feedback for you to go in and rethink mm -hmm. what the goal of your personal statement is, what the goal of your writing is to come in here mm -hmm. and go, okay, now I have a better understanding of what to do, what not to do, what to show, what, what lens to look through, et cetera. Yeah. And this just missed the mark. Again, we're not saying you're not going to be able to write a great personal statement. We're not saying you're not going to get into med school. We're not saying you're not going to be a great physician. You just missed the mark with this one example. Well, um, and if we just said like, yeah, you know, pretty good, <laughs> you know, it'll yeah. be okay. Like that's not helpful if something is actually amiss or there's some dissonance in what you're writing, right? That's why you submit and ask for feedback. Now we can say this is great to go right now, but usually these are drafts in progress. And yep. so yeah. better to have honest feedback <laughs> Then say, right. you know what? This was pretty good. Don't worry about it if it's not going to be helpful <laughs> yeah. because these essays yeah. really, they matter. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, so then I, I want to jump forward to the conclusion and leave some time for some Q&A. Conclusion at the end. Uh, Courtney, you kind of mentioned earlier, early on about a conclusion. For me, conclusion is, okay, great. You've shown me why you want to be a doctor. Now show me what aspirations you have about being a doctor. It could be talking about specific patient population, a specific setting, potentially, if you're interested in academic, rural, et cetera, um, any sort of specific diseases. Ideally, you're staying away from kind of, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. You don't want to narrow yourself too much. I, I probably should remove specific diseases there. But you you may, based on your personal statement, go, this is my passion. And someone reading it go, I can see that. Um, don't, don't write that you want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. Courtney hates ortho bros. Um, no, I don't, but <laughs> ad comms do. Ad comms do not. <laughs> no. Yes. Um, that's for you to decide later, not for them to decide to keep you out on. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about what to avoid here. Uh, it's very common. We see, um, see lots of recaps, right? This isn't an English paper. You don't need to have mm -hmm. an introduction, three paragraphs in the body, and then a, a conclusion paragraph that recaps everything you just said. Yeah. Um, you only got 5,300 characters. Use them wisely. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of themes other than the theme is why do you want to be a doctor and who are you, right? Your theme is, is who you are. Uh, I'm ready. Very common statements that are put in conclusions is I know I'm ready for this. I know I can tackle this. I know I'm ready for the next step. Uh, say, same thing with that last one, right? I, I know this is what I want. So avoid those. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, and then supported by actions. So let me give you a specific example here. Uh, I was doing a mock interview yesterday and, and interview prep, very similar to personal statements. I, I want everything you say to be supported by your actions. And so <clears throat> a student I was doing a mock interview with said he is very interested in uh, working and impacting the rural population in the state that he lives in. And so after the interview, I said, have you ever done anything in a rural environment? He goes, no. <laughs> I'm like, you can't say that then, right? Because they're going to go back and look at your application and go, uh, right. Actions speak louder than words. So just, just yeah. be careful with that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, all right. When it's do... like that, it's, it's just a statement into the nether. There's yeah. no grounding. <clears throat> There's no yep, yep. evidence of that. Let's do uh, an example here. And then again, if you have an example of a conclusion you want to submit, I'll try to get to one. Wow. <laughs> What's that reaction what? for? I this I hate this. Uh, <laughs> this this should one. be kind. Well, this this actually isn't a student here, so we can tear this one apart. I know. But <laughs> I mean, the last sentence give me a freaking break. Today yeah. I understand what it means to be a rehabilitator, teacher, and healer. Why do you need to go to medical school then? Mm -hmm. you, if you if you got it all together what, what i mean that is just so over the top it yep. is unbelievable to me yep another thing i want to point out and kind of updating the verbiage um i don't know what the most politically correct terms are now but like limiting the genders to just him or her at this point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just how, say how should students approach that right help them overcome yeah issues. i just say them. or all patients right like yes, remove yes. gender from it um because yeah. i yeah. i think this is a little bit limiting yeah but i agree i i was really i had a you know almost a visceral reaction to the final sentence where it it's such a, a cocky statement Absolutely. and it and it sounds like you feel like you already have it in the bag and that we diploma. can't <laughs> and we can't tell you no that you're not saying you know kind of i would be humbled to learn at you know or i would greatly appreciate being able to be accepted so i can continue on this path it's like I deserve it, or I've already got it, which is not the tone mm -hmm. that you want to wrap up your personal statement in. Um, because medical schools, think of them as very egotistical, all right? We've got like 150 seats and 6,000 applicants. We want people who are fully bought in. We want people who are gonna push our mission forward and the initiatives that we say are important to us. We want an alignment on goals, and we want somebody who's gonna be a good student, a good classmate, be teachable. And when you come across with this attitude, it's not a good look. Yeah. Well, the other thing about this conclusion is it doesn't, it, it I, I, I don't know really what it tells me. It doesn't really say much uh, about what, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, yes, I get it that you want to, um, as you put it. Uh, well, this is oh, a new I, one. I, I threw a new one up, so oh, I don't want to confuse okay, you. Sorry. No <laughs> yeah, don't worry. No, no worry. Okay, this is a new one, right? Okay. Yeah, this is a new one, the highlighted one. And I promise we can say that we like some. Okay, <laughs> we don't just rip them up just to rip them up. But yep, again, better to have the information on how people are interpreting. Hundred percent. Paul, Paul asked a good question. How do you suggest showing that you want to be a doctor specifically, not another healthcare profession? So my my take on this is always, if you do a good job with the personal statement. 
I don't need you to say, and this is why I want to be a doctor and not a nurse. This is why I want to be a doctor and not a PA. And a lot of students very generically will say, oh, doctors are leaders, and therefore I'm going to show you all the leadership stuff, and that's going to force you to understand why I want to be a doctor and not a nurse. And right again, as the physician in the group, uh, a, lot, a lot of those careers are very similar, right? There are differences, but at the end of the day, we're taking care of people. And I think um, I, I think it's a waste of, of character counts to focus on why doctor versus something else in the personal statement. Again, if you've done a good job with the personal statement, I'm not going to question, well, of course, you could do that as a PA. Why do you want to be a doctor? Anyone can make that argument um, because they're very similar careers. It comes up in interviews as well. Yep. When you ask somebody why they want to be a physician. And, you know, like maybe they have some nursing in their background or something just to pick on that, like, or you introduce it like, well, why not PA, right? Mm -hmm. Even, even if I introduce something in the interview, well, why not this? If you do a good job of talking about all of the positive aspects that are drawing you to physician, you don't have to take anything from the other profession. You don't really even need to talk about it. Yep. Because you are focused on talking about the draw yep. to that. So I, I completely agree with that. It's a much, doesn't get you into murky water or putting down anything else. Just focus on the positive stuff. Yep. All right. What do you all think about this conclusion? I, I, I'm glad that this is, a, is one that we're going to talk about. Because I, I want to make a very, a, a, a key point point here mm -hmm. that to me this one is poorly written mm -hmm. um it the writing it, it, it to me in this one the writing gets in such such so much gets in the way that i i can't even really concentrate on what you're saying because the writing is not not connecting with me um so, and i'll give you an example the your sentences are really long because mm -hmm. you, you have a, a pretty good sized paragraph here and there's really only about four sentences. Yeah. Uh, th these sentences are too long and too complex and the wording is awkward at times. Um, uh, and so I, I think that, that off, off, sometimes that gets in the way of me really wanting to do anything with this. It's like we were talking about earlier, what Courtney had said in terms of scanning and kind of getting, uh, you know, moving through things pretty quickly. To me, this would be one where I would be like, oh, you know, I don't have time to really get, dive into this it's so deep that I'm I, to, to really understand what they're trying to get at. Uh, I'm just going to move on. And, you know, if your writing is, is that way, then um, that can be problematic. Definitely can uh, use some more more help there. Grammarly for the win. <laughs> All right, I want to wrap up here so we have a little bit of time for Q and A. Uh, listen, we love doing workshops. Um, we also love working with students one on one. Scan that QR code or go to medicalschoolhq.net. Um, come work with us. Uh, one on one for uh, application prep, which includes uh, all of the essays you need, interview prep, all that kind of good stuff, um, answering all of your questions, building your school list. If you just would love some personal statement help, um, we can do that as well. Uh, we have a sale uh, just for this workshop going on. Um, I'll put the the code here in the chat. Um, <clears throat> can I can I jump in real quick? Yeah. So. So when we do these one-on-ones, especially with like essay feedback and stuff, like obviously, you know, we we had some reactions to some of the drafts. Again, they're probably very early drafts and that's why you're here getting feedback on them. But, but when you are in kind of a one-on-one -on -one setting, it's not like we're just gonna tear it up and then send you on your way, right? We can... <laughs> We can focus a lot more, we can be sounding boards, we can help you workshop something, add suggestions, or at least tell you when the tone or the reflection and stuff are off. So it's not just tear it up, boom, done. Even though this was done in little pieces just to give you examples of why things were a bit off, it's a little bit different when you're doing one-on-ones because of 
the the back and forth element and the workshopping element. So it's not the same thing as kind of what happened here. And I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, good, good call out. Um, so one on one essay feedback, uh, we can help with with any essay related to um, your process. So come come work with us. Um, and then we have um, new this year. Uh, it's worked well for our sister company, the PA platform. Um, character count based editing, where instead of saying, oh, a personal statement, which everyone make, knows is 5,000 or 5,300 characters, um, what uh, character count really helps with is when we're getting into activity descriptions and secondary essays. A lot of times students have like five core experience descriptions they want reviewed. And our previous packages were, were way too big. And they're like, I just want the, these few things reviewed. And now with character count based um, packages, that covers that. So we have smaller packages for a couple, a uh, couple smaller things, or like the three thousand characters is perfect for the TMDSAS required essay or optional essay. Mm -hmm. um, Six thousand characters, obviously perfect for any of the personal statements. Uh, so go check that out. Twenty five percent off um, through the seventh, I believe, um, using that code impression. So come hang out with us. Uh, let's do some questions. Who has questions and wants to come on and ask a question? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand, and I can allow you to unmute yourself. Um, good dear had his hand raised to see if he wants to talk. I don't know if he was ready for that, or she, or they. Hello. Maybe not. Uh, I will disable talk. Matt, you raised your hand when I asked for that. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hello. What's up? <laughs> yep. Okay. So I put it in the chat, but I kind of wanted to really get to it. So in the conclusion, um, if you're talking, if you have like a repetitive little, I want to do this, uh, that kind of follows things that you want to do as a physician, would you advise something like that? Or would being repetitive come across as a little annoying as a writing style? I, I put a response to that in the chat. So that's my perspective. I'll let everybody else talk. May have different views on it. Some of it is subjective. I don't know if I understand the question. So, like, so if I, you say I, I want to um, provide patients with nutritional advice or um, I, that's not exactly what I was saying, but something along the lines of like, I want to do this and I want to do this, like cer certain milestones that I want to do as a physician. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is repetitive. Yeah. It's from, from uh, an idea perspective. And, and again, I, I agree with Courtney's things, right. It's very self-centered uh, potentially. So, but, yeah. but I, I think to, to your point, Matt, I, I think it, 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 I think you'd have to be a really, you have to be really careful and you have to be really, um, and, and I don't like the, I want to, mm -hmm. you, that you're referring to as an example a better example, I think, is something such as I want to be a physician because people matter, people because people uh, because their their health matters, uh, because their emotional state matters, uh, because the health of their community matters. Uh, so I think that you can use a, a word or phrase like that effectively when you're repeating it, but you have to be really careful with that. And you'd have to really, uh, you know, be a good um, writer to, to effectively do that. But I think it can be done and it doesn't put me off unless it's poorly written and, you know, and, and the things that we've said here. Uh, so I, I, I would be, I, I'd say, you know, um, be careful with that. But the, I want to, I, I don't think, but other types of repetitiveness, I think, can be kind of effective if you do it the right way. Yeah, I, I appreciate all of that. And I kind of want to give a little bit of context of why the I want to is because I feel like it was a way of answering the question of why do you want to go to medical school? And so I felt like it was a direct answering of the question, but I definitely can see how it could definitely be worded better. Just, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. change the structure of some of your sentences to not focus on yourself but mm. focus on the the maybe some of the overarching goals of like kind of what what you value and what you want to add 
I guess, add value to or things like that, just don't start it with I statements, right? It's not just about you. It's what you, this is a service industry. So just in kind of reframing how you're approaching those sentences can remove some of the, I want to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I want to do Mm -hmm. this. I will feel the best if I'm doing this and, and restructure them to focus, you know, maybe at what it will do for patients and other people or the communities that would be affected and things like that. And it doesn't have to be for every sentence. You can start some with I want, right? But if it's just I want, I want, I want, I want, yeah. doesn't come across as a very service-oriented framing for things. Yep. Ryan. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. Uh, I just have a quick question to do with uh, applying MD and MD-PhD. So I understand the MD-PhD application has a separate research statement, but would you recommend ever writing separate personal statements for the two different types of applications if you're sending both? You can't. Well, like depending on the school, like if you're applying MD to one school, but MD-PhD to another, or is it the same? It's it's the same AMCAS okay. application. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, your your personal statement... For me, uh, and Scott, you, you were at UT Southwestern, big MD PhD program. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, the personal statement is the same. It's why do you want to be a doctor? And then when you are applying MD PhD, you get an extra separate essay that is why do you want to be a physician scientist? Okay, Scott, and well, but agree, it, disagree. Well, I would. Well, and then no, there's the research essay is- too. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I, what I would say is in your MD, in, in your, so what you're saying, Ryan, is that you're going to apply MD to some schools, but MD PhD to other schools. That's right. Okay. So the school, what I, what I want to emphasize here is the schools that you're applying to MD PhD programs, um, you still have to do the MD application. And the personal statement in your MD application doesn't need to ignore the fact that you're applying MD PhD. It needs to, it, 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 you're not emphasizing it in that in that uh, personal statement, but you don't want to ignore it uh, so that they they feel like they're uh, looking at two different people. But uh, just to just to really... clarify, just to clarify for for everyone, so that I think we're all on the same page here. When someone is applying to MD and to MD PhD programs, it's one AMCAS application and correct. one personal statement that's going to go out to every program. Everybody, okay. correct. Okay. That's correct. So yeah. balance that as you will, knowing <laughs> again there there is an MD PhD essay as well. Yeah, and a research essay. Three, I think yeah. it's three thousand characters for the MD PhD uh, essay, and then ten thousand. And the research, for the research one is super long. Yeah, they give you they give you a lot of space. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good question. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Eva, let me allow you to talk. Last question. Hello. How are you? Good. Hi, How are you doing? Good. Good. Um. I guess I put it in the chat, but I wanted to ask. For you guys, um, Dr. Scott um, and Ryan, like what what made you want to be a doctor? Because I think <laughs> hearing other doctors. Yeah, Dr. Scott, why well, you want to like, be a doctor? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I never He's, wanted to be. He is still a doctor. <laughs> He's just not a like... physician. <laughs> correct. Uh, I, correct. I'm poking fun at, at Scott Eva because uh, Dr. Wright is a, a reverend doctor okay. um, <laughs> with a, a doctorate correct. in education. Um, so he's a, he's a doctor of being smart. Oh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Smart ass. So smart. what, what, so <laughs> t- t- tell me your, <laughs> tell me the, a question again, Eva. I'm sorry. I, I got lost. Why you wanted to be a doctor. Oh yeah. Ryan, you addressed that. Uh, yeah, I, I gave mine a little bit earlier, right? I initially was interested in being a physical therapist after hurting my shoulder playing baseball. And then I dissected a cat and realized I wanted to cut things open for a living. So uh, that, that led to me wanting to be an orthopedic surgeon. And then the Air he didn't want to help people. Other plans. I didn't, I didn't want to help people. I wanted to cut them open. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was my why. 
Thanks. I think it's helpful to hear what other people have to say too, because sometimes when people articulate it in a certain way, it helps me figure out what I want to say as well. Yep, of course. Yeah. Um, it's one of the great reasons for uh, joining Application Academy. We really didn't talk about it a bunch tonight. Um, so Application Academy is our group coaching program where uh, kind of similar to tonight where we're looking over submissions that are mm -hmm. mostly anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, we all get to read. We all get to give feedback. Um, it is probably the best thing that we do from a, a cost standpoint. Um, tons of value. You get access to Dr. Riot and Courtney and myself, uh, Dina, um, Golini, again, Stanford admissions officer. Um, and you get a year of access to that. Come hang out with us multiple times a week if you can make it. Uh, if not, everything's recorded. You can go check that out at applicationacademy.com. Uh, Dr. Scott Wright, Courtney Lewis, thank you for coming, hanging out with us today. Absolutely. Spreading your wisdom. And any uh, last words of motivation, Dr. Wright and Courtney, for those that are staring at their blank screen, hoping to write a powerful personal statement. Mm. Yeah, I would say um, connect with your inner self as much as possible, as opposed to connecting with things out here. Um, I did this, I did that, I did this, you know, the resume kind of stuff. Connect with what is this all about in a very personal uh, very um, authentic way to you. And it goes back to what I said earlier about getting into your heart. Let me see your passion uh, and let me see your heart. Uh, and, and that's what's going to really uh, impact me when I'm reading your, your uh, personal statement. Love it. I would say stick to the prompt, right? There is a purpose why we are asking this question at this time. So fulfill that requirement and don't have reflections. It, it kind of plays off what, what Dr. Wright is saying. Don't have reflections where it's like story, story, story. This is what happened. And that's why I want to be a doctor stuck on at the end. It's not organically woven in. And I'm still as a reader asking myself, but why? Why? <laughs> like what, what was it about? this why yeah. did you have it on your why medicine narrative why did you highlight it it may be a nice story but if it's not serving its purpose and helping me understand what impact it had and why it's on your journey as a highlighted experience and it's not serving its purpose it's just there it's just a story and it, it just doesn't serve a purpose so stick to the prompt and have reflections that are are woven in and I can understand why I'm reading what I'm reading, how it impacted you or you impacted it and how it helped you grow, evolve, pivot, whatever it was, reinforce this journey forward, then it will make sense. So those would be my, and use Grammarly. <laughs> the tense changes, the grammatical mistakes, you guys, yeah. If you know, because if it is sloppy, I, you know, there's people who don't fully fill out parts of the application. There's some people that submit personal statements that are really unpolished. And if it looks like you haven't taken the time to at least put in effort to clean those things up, again, easy to bump you out. I saw that a yeah. ton with either personal statements or secondaries, like Sometimes I'd get a personal statement, really polished, secondary, trash. Like, are these the same writer? These are terrible. <laughs> like it does, this is not the same voice. Yep. So just mm -hmm. take the time, give yourself enough of a buffer to clean them up, please. It, this is a competitive application thing and just run it through Grammarly, you guys. <laughs> Or chat GPT, but I didn't say that. All right, everyone. No, don't do that. <laughs> do out. not do that. <laughs> Thanks do not do that. Hopefully learning something tonight. Mike, if you're still here, reach out to me. Uh, happy to help in any way I can. Uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful night. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.